Welcome to the next episode of the Gallic War. In the first one, we talked about the beginning of the conflict. The Helvetians have left their homeland and want to settle in the middle of Gaul. Caesar says the reason for this is that they strive for the kingship and therefore want to occupy new territory. However, historians suspect that the ongoing bloody conflicts with the Germans are the actual reason. To do this, they have to go through the area of Gallia Narbonensis. The tribes there are allied with Rome, which is why Caesar sets out as governor to negotiate with the Helvetii. There was currently only one legion in Transalpine Gaul. Caesar arrived in Geneva and ordered the province to provide as many soldiers as possible. In addition, they tore down the bridge to Geneva and prepared for battle. The Helvetii sent the most prominent of their tribe as envoys to Caesar. Their leadership was taken by Nemaeus and Verucloetius. They said, we want to travel through this area. We promise you to do that without committing any acts of violence. Can we have your permission to do that? But Caesar wouldn't agree to this. He is not interested in a peaceful solution. He explained his rejection in his book as follows. He remembered that the Helvetii defeated the consul Lucius Cassius and his army in 107 BC. He could not let this outrage go unpunished. In addition, the Romans were not interested in a passage because it would cause severe unrest in the neighboring areas, especially Transalpine Gaul and Roman Hispania. In order to gain time, he gave the envoys a deadline by which the matter should be thoroughly considered. Meanwhile, the legionnaires and auxiliary forces had built a wall that was 27.5 kilometers long and 4.8 meters high, with a ditch in front of it. He also had garrison posts set up to better ward off attacks. After the two weeks, he met with the envoys again and informed them of his rejection, threatening them with violence if they go through the province anyway. The Helvetii felt betrayed and tried to cross the Rhone with rafts and break through the wall. However, the wall was too strongly fortified and guarded, so the Helvetii stopped their attacks. The only option left for the Helvetians was to go through the land of the Sequani, but the path was too narrow, so they needed their permission in order to get safe and without great casualties through it. They sent the Hedui Domnorix to negotiate for them. He got the permission from the Sequani, but they exchanged hostages to guarantee compliance with the agreement. Caesar wanted to prevent that. The border neighbors of the Sequani were allied with Rome and had large stocks of grain. He needed them to supply his troops he gave the legate Titus Labinius the leadership over the erected fortifications at Geneva and traveled to northern Italy himself. There he raised two legions. After that he went near Aquilia and led the three stationed legions out of their winter camp. So he came back with five legions. they are now six in total, plus auxiliary troops. Caesar now began to pursue the Helvetii. The Helvetians had already led their people through the narrow pass and reached the territory of the Hyadui. As they moved through the region, they destroyed the fields and killed the men who opposed them. The Hyadui asked Caesar for help. The Ambarians and Allobroges also appealed to him. He assured them to help. And that's how the first major battle of the Gallic War began. There is the river Ara, which flows through the land of the Haedui and Sequani and flows into the Rhone. It's a very slow river. The Helvetii were just about to cross it with rafts. Caesar's scouts reported that three, four of the forces already reached the other bank, but that one of four were still on this side of the river. He didn't hesitate and set out from his camp with three legions and attacked those who remain. It was in the middle of the night, and the Helvetii were not ready to fight. They were massacred as a result. Only a small part of them were able to escape into the forest. The Romans won without much effort and took revenge on the Helvetii. To understand this, you need to know the following. The Helvetii tribe is divided into four sub-tribes, Pagi. The Helvetii who remained on the Caesarian side of the river were those of the Tigurinian sub-tribe. It was this sub-tribe that killed the consul Lucius Cassius and inflicted a sensitive defeat on Rome in 107 BC. 
Caesar could also avenge his ancestors, since his father-in-law's grandfather fell in this battle. By the way, his father-in-law, Lucius Calpurnius Piso, is at that moment one of the ruling consuls. Let's get back to the battle. To catch up with the rest of the Helvetii, the Romans built a bridge. Caesar managed to cross the river with his troops in one day. The Helvetians needed 20 for this, and they didn't even get their whole army to the other side. In the next episode, we will deal with the Battle of Bibracte. Will Caesar be able to defeat the Helvetii? We'll find out soon. Until next time, your geek philosopher.